Thank you very much to the leader of the opposition. Let's now move on to the second speaker from the government side, Ms. Daria Popescu. Mr. Chairman, ravishing bell girl. Madame le Ministre, Your Excellencies, Monsieur le Directeur Général, Madame la Directrice, distinguished members of the jury, very, very misguided members of the opposition, and my learned friends from the government, and members of the audience, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you a very enjoyable evening. We have heard tonight, we have heard from the opposition that, you, that passion is in fact a very good thing and that if we, if we had, and that we, had a, we have a lot of passion for debating. No, ladies and gentlemen, we are bringing forward rational uh, arguments, reasoned arguments. If we had passion, we would just jump at the throats of the opposition. We would be... We would be blinded by our emotion, because passion is emotion. It is not reason. <laughs> Furthermore, we have been giving the wonderful example of passion for peace that cannot hurt anyone. Well, I'll tell you who had passion for peace. We had passion for peace. The United States had passion for peace when they sent their troops in Iraq. They had passion for peace. When they, said, when they send their people to die in Afghanistan. We did that, all that in the name of passion for peace. What we actually did was being blinded by it. And now, I have been provoked to... One information, madam? No, thank you. I have been... It has been said to me that passion will remain innocent till proven otherwise. Well, listen here, members of the opposition. I am the first horseman of the apocalypse, and I am a harbinger of war. Ladies and gentlemen, in the beginning, the universe was created. No, thank you. Now, this has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. I, for one, am not very concerned about the end of the world. Whenever it comes, it will kill you all, members of the opposition included. <laughs> However, what you should worry about, humans, is that you put in danger your own little world Point of and societies by unleashing the demon of passion. Yes, please. You are, I presume, the fruit of the passion of your parents. How exactly does that make you a threat to society? No, sir. <laughs> I am the fruit of the love between my parents and of their marriage. Yeah. Moving on. If I were the fruit of passion, I would threaten you all indeed, and I am the harbinger of war. Passion, remember, passion is the beast that devours your powers. It transforms individuals and groups into threats to society. Firstly, I shall talk to you about pa in the, the passion of the individuals. You mortals work so hard to create laws to contain your passion. Wherever you group into communities, you leave space for the others. Why is this? Because the beast of passion is possessive, irrational, and threatening, like a good woman. What information? No, thank you. Our harbinger, harbinger of harbingers, our Prime Minister, already warned you. Passion will gnaw and claw and tear apart the carefully interwoven fabric of society. Point of information. And I can tell you something more, sir. This beast ain't signing no social contract. Yes, please. Uh, we've been living with passion for thousands of years. If it were a real threat, don't you think it would have killed us off by now? We've been in wars for thousands of years, sir. We've been killing each other for thousands of years. We've been threatening each other. Passion, passion consumes you like the black death. Once you have caught it, society will recoil in terror. 
The frenzy of passion turned believers into terrorists, freedom lovers into anarchists, and an Italian patriot into il duce. Now, on a more personal level, imagine yourself quarreling with your loved one. An angry passion gets the, the best of you. Suddenly, you're standing there, holding the liver. And imagine even more if everyone else did this. Secondly, I will move to the passion of the groups that threaten society. Passion is culmination of agitation, ladies and gentlemen. It's duress of excess. Can we imagine a more treacherous threat than passion? Yes, the passion of the many. I can tell you, I trotted with the troops. I galloped through garrisons and I witnessed the wars of human history. I, the, the Crusades, the Intifada and the Troubles were fueled by passionate hatred. In Kosovo and Rwanda alike, people chose passion over concession. And even, even good ideas become threats to societies when they fall hostage to the zeal of passion. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Brilliant ideals. However, when the French revolutionaries became blinded by their passion, the reign of terror started. 40,000 deaths were the toll of French Republican passion. As riders of doom and lawyers, we are not concerned whether passion is intrinsically good or bad. We just want to emphasize it will always be a threat to the establishment. If you rock the boat of society, you put it in danger of capsizing. Ladies and gentlemen, control your passion or your passion will control you. Tonight, beat the beast, ladies and gentlemen, and vote our motion. Thank you.